Welcome to Soul Awakening Solutions. Today we're going to be talking about the stigma that is attached to embracing and embodying your psychic gifts. I am a psychic development teacher and the way that I got there was through my own soul awakening journey where I found that I had a lot of people who were expressing concern about my gifts. I had spent many, many years shutting them down, hiding them, not acknowledging that huge part of myself, which I now call my soul gifts, as opposed to necessarily psychic gifts, which may have some negative connotations for some people. There are many who would call the gifts that I have spiritual gifts, but there are still those who would call them evil or dark or um, consider that my using them is wrong or that the way that I use them is wrong. And that's because of the stigma that's been attached for a long time around people having powers. They're considered to be magical powers or psychic powers. And of course, when we have any sort of power, we have an abuse of power. And so it's automatically assumed that someone who has these gifts is abusing some form of power. And in this awakening period, that's not quite the assumption that a lot of people make. But it was for a very long time while I was growing up, while many of my students were growing up, their gifts were pushed down. And in the Western society, part of that has been around the stigma around mental illness. So if I see things, what are those hallucinations? And do I need to be medicated because of the hallucinations? What is it that I'm hearing? If I'm hearing voices, are they auditory hallucinations? I was recently on a podcast here in Newfoundland called Paranorma NL, so you can check that out on Spotify. Um, and this was one of the questions I was asked. What do I say to those people who say that these are hallucinations? My response was, I say, yes, you're absolutely right. They're hallucinations. That is one word. It's only a word. It's a word that has been given the stigma that says something is wrong with me. Something in me needs to be fixed so that I don't see spirit, so that I don't see auras, so that I don't hear the voices of my guides. Imagine that I'm supposed to fix something because I can hear better than other people. When we can't hear as well as someone else or like me, can't see as well as others, we need aids we need hearing aids we need glasses but if i hear things that other people don't hear i need a different kind of aid according to some not me according to some i would need something that makes my myself not be able to hear that and that's true at times there are times when it's not comfortable to be hearing the voices of our guides of spirit of loved ones who have crossed over and we do want to be able to have some power over those gifts ourselves because we actually want the ability to tune some of it out. But those who don't understand often attach a stigma to it. They often say that we're hearing voices or that we are accessing some negative spirits. I was told quite often if I didn't stop reading tarot, I would be responsible for the negative entities that were attaching to me. So they were blaming my tools for the attachments that sometimes come with these gifts. And it's not that the attachments come with the gifts. It's that the awareness of the attachment comes with the gift. So when we're awakening and we're going through a soul awakening, one of the first things that we become aware of is our own negative consciousness. We become aware that we have a lot of negative thoughts, that they're not all ours, that we need to change. We need to change our self-talk. We need to change 
how we feel about ourselves, how we treat ourselves, how we treat others. So this is our soul giving us guidance. And if we receive that guidance in a lot of screaming from a lot of voices, of course, it's going to make us feel like we're losing it. I don't like to use the term crazy, but that was the term that was used quite often. It can make you feel a little bipolar because we live in a dualistic world and we're bouncing back and forth between good and evil, between yes and no. Our minds are constantly doing that binary zero one zero one zero one, trying to compute whether or not the solution is correct. So when we start to dive in deep, we go into that dark night of the soul because we're avoiding that stigma and that stigma has done a lot of damage to a lot of the people that I do work with in my psychic development courses and in my spiritual coaching there's a tangle between the stigma and the trauma I find that most of my students experienced these Gifts as they were small children, children are much more connected to the spiritual realm. They haven't lost that sense of wonder, that sense that there are fairies, there are angels. My mother always told me that when my daughter was talking to her invisible friends, she was talking to the angels. Even before she was forming words that we understood, this baby babble, my mother always said, oh, she's just talking to the angels. Today, having connected with my guides and having asked for, <clears throat> pardon me, having asked for wisdom and insight on those particular topics, I understand that indeed they're getting guidance from the angels on how to grow their bodies, on how to connect, how to communicate. And if we had not been telling children that they shouldn't be doing this, then perhaps we would be more deeply connected spiritually and we wouldn't be going through these traumatic awakenings that we often go through. Perhaps that dark night of the soul would be much lighter and we wouldn't need to worry about it. Today, I have a number of friends who are assisting their children with that. They're allowing their children to embody and embrace their gifts and they're encouraging them to share it. They're not telling their children that they don't see something that they do see. Once we teach a child that grandma's not there, grandma has passed over to the other realm. So no, you can't see her. No, you can't talk to her. And I have so many students who tell me that as a child, they could talk to someone who they had never met, a grandparent or an ancestor who they hadn't even seen in pictures until after they'd already met them as spirit guides. And when they told this to the adults, the adults said, no, no, you, you don't see her, she's dead. Which is a very confusing thing to tell a child who you're trying to teach what the truth is. When you teach a child, don't tell lies, but they're telling you the absolute truth for them, that they can see somebody standing next to you and she wants to tell you something. You say, no, 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 that's fantasy. Well, then what is the truth? How do we then learn to embody our truth and to live authentically when we've been told as children that our truth is a lie? And there's so many others who are now, again, experiencing these awakenings because they've been traumatized. We thought maybe the day of burning witches was long gone, but really we've just changed the way. Humanity has changed the way that we burn people. We do it by attacking who they are, who they are at the core of their beings. You are not supposed to see something. So I should close down my third eye. I should block that gift. I should read a book that tells me that it's evil, that it's wrong, instead of the book that tells me how to have some power over it. I've written a book actually called Empower Your Spiritual Awakening which does give tips and tools and guidance on how to actually do that. What is a psychic attack? What is a psychic vampire? I noticed that these terms are put out there as if that's what it is that we're doing wrong. Psychic is actually just a word that's used to describe spiritual gifts. It's used to describe our ability to tap into 
another realm, a non-physical realm that coexists with us in this realm. When I hear spirit and they get really loud, I tell myself I have noisy neighbors. Today it's snowing a lot outside, so things get quieter when it's snowing, even in spirit for some reason. Things get quieter when it's snowing. Perhaps it's a shift of frequency. My guides are telling me that the frequency of snow is quieter. So I, I tend to go off on tangents. That's one of the signs that you're spiritually connected or spiritually gifted. It's not just that you have conversations with yourself. It's that the ones who are um, chiming in and giving little bits of information tend to flow through you as well. So you tend to go off on a bit of a tangent. That's one thing that you can say, oh, well, maybe that's my gift. Maybe I'm flowing through information. And that's okay. Let it be okay for you to be yourself. That's so important. One of the things that we can do to break the stigma is break the stigma with ourselves. Let ourselves be okay with the gifts we have. Let it be okay that people don't understand you. That's all right. They don't need to. This is a time of learning to understand yourself and to connect with people who are learning to understand themselves. We look for people who mirror back to us the lessons that we need to work on. So today, the lessons that we need to work on are embodying our light. The dark night of the soul is something that's supposed to push you into the light, not have you draw in and hide deeper. This is a time when your soul is saying, let's light things up. Let's awaken. Let's be as one. Let's drop into unity out of this dualistic consciousness. I love that one side is one hand, one side's the other. When we bring them together, it's a prayer. So let's bring things together. Unity is what's going to allow us to break the stigma. We let go of judging ourselves. We let go of judging others. And when we do that, I found for me that there were people all around me who were afraid of their spiritual gifts. They were afraid. I had one friend who shared with me that she watched um, some people out on a boat. And they were out in the boat and she had this thought, if they're not more careful, they weren't being careful on the boat. If they're not more careful, they're going to drown. Shortly afterwards, the boat tipped over and the two men drowned. For the longest time, she believed she had done that. Rather than precognitively received that information, she couldn't caution them. They were too far away. She was aware that that was what was going to happen. And so she blamed herself and thought she made it happen. The thing is, is that we tend to look at things from the same information that we've been fed as children and even in past lives. So we come here together to awaken these gifts, to break the stigma and break the cycle of people not being allowed to use their gifts. And so often some of those messages those blaming messages, you should have told them. I had the similar thing when a friend went hiking and I had a feeling that it wasn't going to go well for her. And even while I was walking home um, from the grocery store, I had a very strong feeling that something had happened. When I got home, she told me she had tripped and fallen and she had not injured herself badly, but it had set her back because she had a back injury. And I told her, I said, I had a feeling that something was, why didn't you tell me, she said. She was one of the people in my life who would have told me not to be tapping into this stuff. And yet, when it might have affected her or given her some further guidance, she was more than willing to hear it in the after that. So now it's putting it on me. Maybe she wouldn't have tripped if I told her. Maybe she would have. Maybe if she hadn't gone walking that day, I wasn't given the message to give to her. I just received it. If someone ha hasn't asked me for the message, I no longer give it. I used to. I used to tell people, oh, this person wants to talk to you, this person who's in spirit. That makes a lot of people uncomfortable. So this is one of the things that I do in my effort to break the stigma is I teach my students and my um, 
coaching clients how to discern when is appropriate to share the information that you've been given. Oftentimes, the information that I receive isn't given to me to share. It's only given to me in a way that I've kind of overheard it. And just because I overhear something in a supermarket lineup doesn't mean I'm supposed to pass the information on. It may just make me aware of the way that gossip affects others. So a lot of times the information that I hear in spirit comes across very much like gossip, like a lot of chitter chatter going on. And I've learned to close that out. We can do that by changing our frequency because it's very similar to, and I, I was taught this very early in my education, I need to visualize a radio dial or the tuning on a, on a station. And I need to visualize that I'm moving it to a different frequency. And I would be like, okay, I can't even visualize. So how am I gonna do that? And I'm in the midst of all this noise. Really changing your frequency is easier done if you just change your thoughts. So if I'm on the frequency where I'm picking up a lot of gossip and spirit, I need to ask myself, where am I in judgment of someone else? Where are my thoughts? Because my thoughts might already be with that person. And I've gone into the same frequency of those who are perhaps trying to find a resolution. So I need to come back. And that's very simple to drop back and come back to the space that you're in. Because what you're picking up is the information in between the spaces, in between the space where you are and the space where that person is, is a lot of information. The interesting part to me is if I just make a note of it and recognize that I've seen it, what I will see is how it showed up in their life and shifted them. If I keep it to myself, I may open a space for them to share that shift with me. I have so many people who come to me to share their experience. They don't want me to fix it or to change it for them. They want to talk about it because there hasn't been a place for that. There hasn't been a place for people to share their spiritual awakening experience, to share their experience with entities, yes, but also their experience with overcoming those entities. The stigma has created silence and the silence creates a space for the entity to come in and attach and create confusion and difficulties and self-blame and self-harm and self-judgment. And as you can see, even we close down, we become closed because we're afraid. We're afraid that if we share that information, we will get judged. And if we share it with the wrong people, maybe we'll get medicated. Maybe we'll get locked away. I had um, another person share with me that had they shared, many people actually have shared with me, had they told their parents what they were seeing or what they were hearing, they would have been locked away. Their parents would not have given them the freedom. And this kind of sharing, this shared experience is not meant to be something, oh, I tell my parents that this bad person said this to me. I tell my parents that I saw this and I'm hoping that now the parent is starting to awaken themselves and they say, oh, please tell me more. How are you seeing this? How is it showing up? Children can teach us so much about our gifts. There are so many star children being born now. The golden children, the rainbow children, the indigo children, the crystal children are all here and they're all open to teaching this stuff, to teaching us and to sharing how they're gaining that wisdom, that if we're open to sharing what we've gained and the wisdom we've gained, then we're expanding our gifts. And when we expand that consciousness, we can connect with a much higher consciousness. We need to let go of the stigma that closes us down and keeps this in secrecy. This is not a guarded secret. This is not anymore something that needs to be passed down from master to student. There's many modalities that are passed down from master to student. A gift isn't one. This is something that's opened up in us and we need to share our experience with it 
in order to help each other, in order to receive greater guidance from our guides, from their guides, the more I open to sharing that experience, the more people come in who are open to sharing their experience with me. I tell my students, my clients, I learn more from them. I learn more from you than I do from myself and from my own experience. Through sharing my experience with others, I have learned so many things and I've gained so many tools that that's what I share now. And as I share the tools, I gain more. In future episodes, I hope to have some of my friends and some of my students and some other coaches and guides who are going to come on and share their spiritual awakening journey, how they use their gifts to guide others and how they use their gifts to embody their authentic truth. So if you'd like to come on, if you'd like to be a guest on my podcast, I would love to hear from you. Please um, put a comment in the chat or send me an email. You'll find my email on my website and in the comments below. My website is www.soulawakeningsolutions.ca. I'm in Canada. And I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your insights. And if you'd like to come on and share your own spiritual awakening journey, your own uh, experience with spirit, with entities, with whatever has called your soul and whatever way your soul has called you to awaken, we would love to hear from you. So that's it for me today. I hope that you all have an amazing angel blessed rest of your day and we'll be talking to you soon.